Good evening everyone, I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for watching this video. We are looking here at a good limit application video where we have to evaluate that specific limit and that right there is a portion of the formula in terms of the functional part of the formula for compound interest. A periodic compound interest, you know principal at time zero times one plus rate divided by the number of periods all to the power of number of periods times the years. Limit as n approaches infinity, you know that entire formula would essentially equal principal at time t and then you'd have everything else that you see over there. We have to evaluate that part. If you were to evaluate that part, a good thing you can do is take this right over here and push it outside. You can use a constant multiple property of limits and push out a coefficient. In this area, we can specifically treat this as a coefficient. You know this, you could very well see it as this. The C has been pushed out and then you would have your limit and you would do the evaluation. The C has been pushed out, then you can bring it in at the end. Likewise, we'll push out this principle at time zero, the PO, and then we'll bring it in at the end. When you bring it in at the end, it'll be so much easier. So now your limit expression is limit as n approaches infinity. We've pushed the principle at time zero out your entire expression becomes 1 plus r over n to the power of n t. When you put infinity here in places of n, this thing zeroes out and you end up seeing 1 to the power of infinity, which is an indeterminate power type, right? And you know that. When you have that, you want to convert that into an indeterminate product type. These are the indeterminate limit forms for which you have to do these necessary conversions. You can very well convert an indeterminate power type into a product type, by bringing in the natural log. All of this, imagine, is equal to y, and then you do a natural log y, and then you can get rid of that exponent, nt natural log 1 plus r over n. That's what your entire expression becomes. Now if you evaluate this with regards to infinity, you'll end up seeing that you have an infinity times zero, an indeterminate product type. This indeterminate product type has to be converted into a quotient form, and you know you can do something like this. The indeterminate product type can be converted by means of this procedure. You can do f function divided by the reciprocal of g or you can do the g function divided by the reciprocal of f. Here's my f function, here's my g function and we would like to pick one of these routes. I would pick this one right here. It's easier route and that's what we'll do. This route will convert the indeterminate product type into a basic indeterminate limit form of infinity over infinity and that's the route we want to take. Remember, we started with an indeterminate power type, which we converted into this form, which we'll then convert into that form using the Le Hapital's rule of derivative procedure. And you know you can do that. Here we'll do the derivative with respect to n of the numerator and the denominator. We'll do d over du. We have a composite here, d over du, l and u, and then du over dn. We'll have 1 plus rate over n. That's the numerator expression of this g function being affected by the Le Hapital's rule. Here you'll do a derivative with respect to n of this 1 over nt, the reciprocal part. And you know at the end you can do the infinity application. When you do the derivative of natural log u, you're getting a 1 over u. When you're doing the derivative of 1 plus rate over n, the 1 is going out as a 0, but r over n is really r times 1 over n, and you're doing the derivative of this, you're really doing r times the derivative of 1 over n, which is r times minus 1 over n squared. You can do this on the side, but the power rule will tell you that. You'll have minus r over n squared. That's what will come out from this right over here. Likewise, when you're doing the derivative of 1 over nt, you're really doing 1 over t times the derivative with respect to n of 1 over n. You'll get minus 1 over t n squared because this 1 over n will come out as a minus 1 over n squared which will hit with this and you get minus 1 over n squared t or t n squared, it doesn't matter and that right there is taking us to a good path. All of this is with evaluation of infinity. When you put infinity in here after you've resubstituted for u, you'll see if the indeterminate form right here exists or not. If it exists, you'll have to do another round of derivative procedures. Bring in the u over here. The u was over here, 1 plus r over n. All of this is my u. And then you know you have minus r over n squared. And then here you have minus 1 over n squared t. You can cancel things out. This minus will cancel out with this. This n squared will cancel out with that, which is good. And then you can, of course, put the infinity here. When you consolidate everything, this 1 over t will flip and attach with this r. 
you will have an RT here in the numerator and this right here will attach right here as a denominator 1 plus R over N and you can put infinity here. When you put infinity over here this R divided by infinity zeroes out you essentially end up with RT over 1. But this RT over 1 is all equal to this right here natural log Y. We know now natural log Y is equal to RT right so therefore Y is equal to E to the power of RT. This right here is the end result of this entire limit procedure but we have to bring this back, the coefficient PO. When you bring this back, the PO which was pushed out the coefficient, you end up having Y is equal to PO times E to the power of RT. And this O really is a subscript. You want to write it as such, principle at time zero times E to the RT. But all of that is equal to this right over here. Therefore, your entire expression in terms of this limit evaluation becomes principle at time T is equal to principle at time zero times e to the power of rt, you've essentially converted something which was a, a periodic compound interest formula into a continuous compound interest formula utilizing this Lee Hopital's rule of derivative procedures. Remember you started here with an indeterminate power type. Then that converted into this indeterminate product type. And then from there you converted it into this indeterminate quotient type. You know that. All of this is easy stuff, but you've seen it before. Indeterminate quotient type. And then you dealt with the quotient type using the Le Habitat's rule procedure and taking it all the way to completion. So this is the entire procedure that had to be followed through to convert this specific formula, your periodic compound interest, into a continuous compound interest and you can do it by means of this limit application. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and enjoying it. Have a good day. Bye.